Welcome back everyone. So I'm here to come with to back to you guys with a little bit of a different tutorial than normal. I'm actually getting into Unraid tutorials. So we're going to go over some cool Unraid apps that uh, I found on uh, this kind of mini series. I'm going to go as I find them, but basically I haven't worked with Unraid in a while and I'm coming back to it now to just show you guys what's up. So today we're going to talk about ROM M. This is a really cool, powerful tool. It basically allows you to play your backed up game in a um, environment on your web UI or your phone or any of your browsers, but it runs basically on your Unraid server. So um, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, okay, so first, uh, what ROM does, basically I've already explained, so we want to make sure we have a share available. So if you haven't made a share yet, we're going to do that. Mine is called Unraid Share, but I'm going to add a new one just for, to show you how to do it. So click Add Share. Uh, we're going to go and type in a name or share, so we'll just put unraid dash share dash 2. I'm going to delete this afterwards, but this is just for your own enjoyment. Um, we're going to leave this comments blank because we don't need that. Minimum free space, if you have a lot of space, this isn't really needed. Uh, primary storage, we're going to select our main array. Um, allocation method, we can leave all of these the same. Uh, the only thing we need to enable is um, if you want to include a certain disk, but we're just going to keep our array the same. Uh, and then we're going to click on Add Share. Once we do that, we're going to go back into the Share setting. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to select under SMB Security Export Yes, and click Apply. Basically, clicking Yes allows it to be exposed to your PCs inside your network. So let's say like I'm on a Windows PC right now, and I want to go to my ROMs folder. All I have to do is go on. Oops, drag this over. All I have to do is go on my PC, go down to either networks, if you have network, and click on my Unraid, or you can type in the IP. So mine is 192.168.0.222. That's my Unraid IP. And then see Unraid Share 2 is right there. We can upload our shares stuff. So next, um, I'm going to remove this because I do not need it. Um, let me do that right now. Actually, we'll just leave it for now. I'll remove it later. We're going to go into apps. Uh, and you should, if you haven't done it yet, you should show, like, you know, apps have been installed. Um, we're going to go into ROM M. I'm just going to type it in. It's right there. And I already have one running, but I'm going to show you for purposes. I'm going to add another one. We're going to click on, um, let me start this one more. Let me pause this one. So I'm just going to share mine. So you're going to click run. You're going to click install. Mine says edit because it's already running. You're going to want to set the um, name to ROM and the repository to the latest, obviously. We're going to need to make a bridge. So actually, let's do that first. Um, let's go into, so as you can see, if we go into the uh, Doki Wikis page for ROM, there's not right set up. We're going to run a couple things. So we're going to make uh, a new network to make for the ROM. So we can do ROM. Or, uh, we're going to go into our PowerShell. So to do this, we just go back to Unraid. Uh, we copy this command, obviously, in the doc wikis. We click on this terminal. It should load in the terminal. And we're going to make this and paste it. That's going to create a ROM, um, I'll just do ROM2, uh, network. But you're going to just create as ROM. I already have ROM created. And we're going to then go back to the wiki. And we're going to check to make sure the network's there by copying this. and Going back to the terminal real quick, and find it here. It is. Click paste, and we see now we have ROM two as our second network. I already have ROM one, obviously, so I don't need to do that. Now, once we've done that, we need to install MariaDB, so we can use the official Linux server. I notice the official does not work uh, for some odd reason, so we're just going to use the Linux server one. So we're going to go back to apps. And we're going to uh, set up the Linux server one. So Linux, we'll do uh, MariaDB. And here's the uh, MariaDB by Linux server. We're going to click on that. And we're going to click, uh, you'll click install. Mine's obviously actions. Um, and we're going to set MariaDB to the name. And we can keep all this the same. We need to select the network type, custom ROM. 
Uh, once we've done that, we're going to make our web UI 3306. That's obviously standard for MariaDB. Uh, the MySQL password, you can make this anything you want. It's up to you how secure or not secure it is. I recommend securing it, though, with a secure password. And you got MySQL database, and so you get ROM. MySQL user, ROM with two M's. MySQL password, just make it the same as this one. It doesn't, you know, it can be as secure. It has to be a minimum of four characters, obviously. But just make it as secure as you want it. We don't use remote SQL, so we can leave that alone. Click done and apply. Once that's done, it will apply. And uh, once you do that, we can now set up ROM. So we're going to go into ROM and search in the apps again. And we're going to click on it. And we're going to click on um, action or install if you have not installed it yet. Name, ROM with two M's. Uh, we're also going to select custom network type as ROM. Uh, we're going to set the port. You can set it to anything you want. I chose 9090. It'll be default as 8080 if you have stuff running on that port, which most apps do. I recommend sending it to a different port, so I set mine to 9090. Um, uh, the library, this is where we're going to keep a ROM. So how we find that is if we go into our um, ROMs folder or our share. Uh, obviously, Unraid share is my original one. I go to games, uh, and then I have ROMs folder right there. That's what I've selected. Uh, and you're just going to, you can find it easily. Um, most likely, if you're using the default user that you haven't set up with other users, you can just type in forward slash MNT, forward slash, and then it should pull up with your shares. Uh, we're using user disk. That's the original one that is set up uh, by my default user. User share, games, ROMs, and there's a ROM. Um, and then resources, you can make this wherever you want. If you don't have a lot of space, I recommend making sure to put it on a drive that does have a lot of space because it can take up quite a few um, pieces of information and data. Assets, again, I just keep these all default because I have quite a bit of space. Again, I recommend um, keeping your config folder the same because we're going to need to access this later. Um, and then DB host, we're going to do MariaDB, obviously because we're using MariaDB. Uh, DB port, again, that's the one from our original uh, MariaDB. That's going to be 3306 unless you changed it. That was in the original name for this one, the MariaDB setup we just went through. User, that's going to be ROM. DB name, ROM. Again, these are set up with the MariaDB that we did before. Our DB password is going to be the same as before. So again, make sure it's the same password. Then we need our ROM authentication, key, uh, authentication secret key. To get this, we're going to go into Open SSL, or we're going to go into Terminal, sorry, again, and type this in. So we're just going to find our terminal window again, and we're going to paste this in. That'll give us a code. We'll paste that in here. Um, this is going to be blurred out, but you can find this. Your This will find like the images and the backgrounds for your games. To find this, um, let's go into that. Give me one second. So again, this is all documented on the GitHub Wiki, so I'm going to go through that now. So for the API, this is basically, you're going to need a Twitch account and two-factor authentication installed, which most new phones uh, have the 2FA available. So let's do that. Let's go into open link. And it's going to bring us to this link. And we're going to sign it to Twitch. I'm going to sign into my Twitch. I'm already signed in. So once I'm in there, I can click on um, register a new application. If you haven't already installed 2FA, you can look it up. It's not that hard. Uh, again, we can just click the link. So uh, when we are, in, if we go in there, we just right click, click open a new tab, name it uh, ROM M, and I'll just use Demon Warrior Tech. And uh, authentication URL redirect, we're going to do uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host. And that's going to use our local host to access the key. Um, category, we're going to select. Um, Application integration. Sorry, hold on. Let's double check. Use application. Hold on. Oh, I'm second guessing myself. Application integration, and we're gonna make it uh, confidential. I'm not a robot. We're gonna pass this security test um, real quick. Verify, and then create. And once we've created it, uh, we can. Um, after we create it, we can, um, this one, we can click manage, and this is not going to be used by me. I'm going to delete it straight after, but I'm going to click, I'm not a robot again, 
and we click on this. This is our client ID. We'll copy that and we will paste it into uh, the client ID right here. Again, I'm not going to paste it in because I've already done that. And we're going to go back to the Twitch developer, click create new secret and click OK and copy this and again paste it in here for this. The IGB client secret. You can also use Steam Grid, but it's not necessary. I mainly just use Steam Grid because it's the second option just in case you know, the Twitch one goes down. But once we've done that, we have set up all of our settings. We can click apply. I've already done this, so I'm not going to click apply. I'm just going to click cancel, um, back out. Once you do that, it should load up, um, and it'll load to this looking um, flavor. So next, we're going to go into Docker. And you won't have these started, though most likely they may auto start, but if they don't, click on this from off to on for both of these Marie, Debian, and, and uh, ROM. And to check that ROM started correctly, we can just click on log. And we can see that it, uh, it has started correctly if you go all the way up. I don't know. I have so many logs, but because um, I'm scanning games right now. Uh, but the log should say that um, it's started up correctly. And once that's done, we can continue the next step. Okay, so once we have our um, our settings done in Unraid, we need to do one more thing. So we need to go to uh, our regular um, Unraid server, either through network or typing in our IP. And we type in, uh, we go to app data, and you have a folder called ROM once this is started. And we're gonna go to config. And you're gonna have a config.yml, it's gonna be blank. We're just gonna go to this. Um, what else? We're gonna go to go on. We're gonna go to this link that I have in the description. It's gonna have your config.yaml example. We're just gonna click on this little copy raw file, and then we're gonna open our config.yml. If you don't have one, just uh, you can obviously make a new file. And we're going to click uh, Control A and then Control V to paste it. I've already got mine running, so I'm not going to paste over it. Essentially, that's what we're going to do to find it. Um, this will find basically our ROMs for us. So if you Control A and Control V, it's going to be the same thing. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I have already done that. And we're going to click Control S or Save to save it. Uh, once we've done that, then we can move on to the next step. Um, and then we're going to go into web UI. Now it won't show you this. It'll actually show. Let me log out real quick. Hold on. So if you log in, it'll make you write a username and password. Just make sure you do that. Make sure when you set it, this will be your current username and password. It will not change until you make a new user. So make sure you remember this username and password or we have to start all over. I'm going to click log in. You'll be brought to home screen. It will probably be blank, but um, in my case, I already have loaded some of my ROMs. So mine is not. Uh, to search, we just go into here. And before we do this, we need to check that our directories are set up correctly. So I got a little confused on this. And I think it's important to show the right way to do it. So again, uh, my, uh, in my system, I go to Unraid Share, Games, ROMs, and I'll have different folders. The folder structure is going to be different depending on what games you have. So I have like GBA for Game Boy Advance, N64 for Nintendo 64, NGC for GameCube. PS for PlayStation, PS2 for PlayStation 2, and Wii for Wii games. Um, to get these um, set up, we just, uh, the folder structure is really important, so naming is, has to be correct. Uh, for example, GameCube, you want to make sure you set a separate directory called ROMs in here, and then you have all your Game Boy, or I'm sorry, uh, GameCube uh, ISOs or NKIT or whatever they are in there. Uh, same goes for PS2 and PS1, but for example, for PS2, we're going to need a ROMs folder, which has all our games uh, that we backed up legally. And then uh, we're also going to need um, a BIOS folder. This will have all our PS2 BIOSes in it. Uh, again, you need to get these legally from your game console that you have uh, in real life. This is pretty easy to do. You can figure out how to do it uh, just by looking up line, how to get my game uh, PS2 BIOS. Not too hard at all. And once you have those, if the folder structure is correct, if you have any issues with finding the folder structure, 
it's best to look at the em, uh, the emulator.js uh, information. So you can do this by um, you know just looking up emulator because emulator.js is what's going to run these. Hold on. Uh, if you look up emulator. This will have uh, exactly how to, you know, set that up. Your full directories to work correctly with it. Um, go to documentation, and we're going to, and I'll link all these in the description. If you guys want to know how to use it, uh, it's pretty simple to do. It has me listed in somewhere on here. Well, I could, I'll, I'll add the list in the description on how to name it correctly. Essentially, it's as simple as that. Once we've done that um, and we set up our ROM directors correctly, we can go over to this. Uh, it'll be like a download icon. So you'll see like you have your games, and then you have your uh, search collection, your upload, if you're going to upload them, and you're going to have this little search bar. And you'll just click on quick scan and click scan, and it'll scan all of your games and get all the metadata for it. And then once you're done, you click on the home screen and you see all our games are up here. And now we can run them uh, if we so choose. By just clicking on, let's say I want to play, I don't know, NBA Street. Um, we should be able to just. Click on this. Maybe. Let's try it. Maybe it does. I actually don't think it runs GameCube, but I can do like an N64 game, maybe. Let's try Gretzky Hockey. Play. Play. And now I'm playing Wayne Gretzky Hockey. The NHL and the NHLPA present Wayne Gretzky, 3D Hockey 98. So once you've done that, you obviously have a bunch of other options in here, but we exited out of it, um, obviously, because the audio is not the best. You can select on the, the right-hand side, like, different um, cores, if you want to use cores. Um, there's different settings you can do for it. Um, it's a really awesome way to run your games at locally or externally if you want to do a, like on a reverse proxy. Let's say I'm out and I want to play on my phone. I want to play a, a ROM on my phone that I've legally backed up um, from my game disc. I can just go on my phone, put it on a, a like a controller, and play on my phone wherever I'm at. Um, and just by loading the web browser uh, up on my phone. So this gives a whole new meaning to the definition of portability and it's using the hardware obviously from my um, server so you don't have to worry about your phone or your other things heating up super hot and getting overheated because of the intense hardware it's putting on it if you guys enjoyed my um, video please comment rate and subscribe let me know if you guys have any uh, things you want me to do in the future video wise I'm gonna keep going on a couple things for Unraid maybe put a couple new things in um, a new series like I said starting for this so if you have any questions comments concerns let me know. Join our Discord, and don't forget, you can always buy me a coffee or uh, buy me a tech, as I call it. Um, if you want to donate, I have that up there in the description. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day.